morning, church. You heard that recording in progress. There's no getting away with this now. So thank you so much for coming out this morning to worship our Lord and our King. It is um, July 4th, and it, uh, the United States of America is celebrating its, its independence today. Anyway, uh, uh, I would like to thank each and everyone, especially the leadership of our church, for giving me this opportunity to to share to you uh, God's word this morning. And um, it is um, an honor to deliver his message for you. And um, thank you so much. Let's go to our Father in prayer before we start the lesson. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you blessed us with. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your your blessings every day, Father God. We thank you for this freedom that we enjoy in this country. We thank you for the freedom that your son gave to us by dying in the cross. At this time, dear God, we pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds. As we listen to your words, please help your servant deliver your message, and may we understand it as we go through it. Thank you, Father God, for all these things that you bless us with. We love you. And all of these things we ask in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, as I mentioned this morning, uh, a while ago, uh, we are celebrating Independence Day in the United States of America. And uh, I would like to thank Brother Todd for reading the scripture this morning. Taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, it says, Leave as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Should honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor those who are in authority. We will be looking at the freedom that we enjoy as citizens of this land and as citizens of the spiritual realm, which is in heaven. Which are, let us take a little strip back on time. 245 years ago, it was July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was approved by the U.S. Congress. America became the land of the free. The early Americans were not under the ruling of the British government anymore. They acquired their independence and ruled for themselves under a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And the freedom that we enjoy now was made possible because of the great sacrifices of these brave men and women who fought for this country. That is how the United States of America was born, the land of the free. In the secular world, we call this our freedom, the freedom to live and let live. But for the followers of Jesus Christ, freedom comes from being a disciple of Christ. As we will see as we go on with this lesson, the word freedom takes a new meaning for believers. In our spiritual life, we have this freedom too. Going back in the Old Testament, we are most familiar with Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. We remember the famous words of Moses, let my people go. 
And before this, it was Abraham who God told him that he will have many descendants because he was declared righteous because of his faithfulness. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, we shall see that. And then he was told that his descendants will be enslaved by another nation. Likewise, in Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 and 14. This type of freedom is what the Israelites understood. Not until Christ came into the picture. When Jesus declared, the truth will set you free, they didn't understand what he meant. Let us look at the conversation of Jesus Christ with his followers, taken from the book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. I read, to the Jews that believe him, Jesus said, if you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and we have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, Verily I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus is referencing their culture, their master and slave culture at that time. The Jews thought that being free from working and living as slaves by another nation is freedom. But Jesus is not talking about that. It was their slavery from their sins. It is called spiritual slavery. And they didn't know that. They didn't know that. The only way to be free from the sin is through Jesus Christ. Like the Jews in this passage... Many do not realize that we are living in the bondage and slaves to sin. Whenever we look for freedom and independence outside Christ, we fall into sin. In the land of the free, we often confuse the true nature of freedom. And there are two types of freedom. For many of us, freedom has become synonymous with personal independence. The ability to make our own decisions and choose our own path in life. To do whatever we want, whenever we want it. And that's what we call freedom. It's called outside freedom. That's the freedom that the secular world is providing us. It's not bad though. But this is not the freedom that Jesus promises. When Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah, he said that he had come to earth to proclaim freedom. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And on another occasion, he said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed, which we read a while ago. John chapter 8, verse 36. This was not setting us free to do whatever we wanted. For Jesus was not setting us free to whatever we wanted. He was freeing us to do what we ought to do. He was liberating us to walk in relationship with God and to be, to be the kind of people He created us to be. That freedom is called the inside freedom, a spiritual freedom 
It is the ability to obey God and choose His will for our lives. And that is the freedom that sin had long denied us. Even as Christians, we can fall prey to the temptation to trust on other things for our freedom. Some people think that freedom is having a lot of money. Some people think freedom is doing good work. Some people think your status in life or your influence of power can buy you freedom and happiness. But true Christians find freedom and happiness in Christ and in Christ alone. First, let's look at this. When, died, when Christ died on the cross, He gave us the freedom from sin and death. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. I was reading the bulletin this morning and I uh, kind of smiled and remembered Brother Rex. Thank you, Brother Rex, for putting up the bulletin this morning. And um, I told him this morning that this is what unity in mind means. We have the same text on the bulletin and the one I put in here. So I think it is not coincidence, but it is the, in the unity of mind and in heart that we recognize that. Going back to the text, it says, Therefore, for those who are in Christ, there is no more condemnation. It means we cannot be, they can't find us guilty of any sin. Condemnation means to be sentenced to something. Because we have been freed from sin, from the death of Christ on the cross, and by our acceptance as sees our Savior and our Lord. Meaning, the law of the Spirit is life, and the law of sin is death. Obey sin and unbelief, then death follows. But when Christ died on the cross, he took our sins with him. We are no longer held captive by sin. And if we are the disciples of Christ, we are under his authority. Romans chapter 6 verse 14, Paul explains it. For sin shall no longer be our master, because you are not under the law, but under grace which was given by God through the death of His Son on the cross. John chapter 1 verse 17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. We all know that the wages of sin is death. Our freedom in Christ means we do not have to fear death because we will spend eternity with Him because our citizenship is in heaven. Remember our song? We are on our way to that fair land where the soul never dies. After this life, we are being prepared for the eternity. For the eternity. Philippians 3, Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, Paul puts it this way. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. While we celebrate America's Independence Day, and we only celebrate it once a day in a year. 
we get to celebrate our freedom in Christ every day. Every day. For eternity. Remember that. Let us bear in our mind that the freedom that Christ gave us is not a passport to sin. Absolutely not. Instead, we should understand that our freedom is a unique expression allowing us to love God and to love others. Those are the commandments. We are governed by the love of God because God itself is love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says, You, my brothers and sisters, are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Once again, we are governed by the love of God. Other point, freedom makes us united. As the nation celebrates independence, unity is required to gain progress. That's why the United States of America was born. United States going towards one goal. Unity is a common topic in the Bible. Promoting the peacefulness of living unified in harmony. Every born again believer who is saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ is incorporated into the body of Christ. The church us. So all Christians are united in Christ by definition because they are all united with Christ through salvation. We are called to live out this unity by loving, serving, respecting, and forgiving one another. We are to view and treat other born-again believers in a matter that reflects the actual oneness our Savior has achieved for us. He died on the cross for that. We share the same heart and mind as we serve the same Lord by striving together for the same gospel. So, being united in Christ means continually striving to live with other believers in a way that reflects the fact that Christ has made us all one in Him. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew or Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor their male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Also on 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, Peter said, Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. United in Christ means loving one another despite our differences. There's no escaping our many differences. They're broadcast to us daily in these trying times, even if we're not watching arguments break out on cable news. And social media. We're voicing disagreements with people from all walks of life. Sometimes it feels like nobody has our back and nobody understands us. It is tough, tough to admit that we tend to blow disagreements sometimes out of proportion. In reality, we hold much in common with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. For example, we are all sinners. Sin is a part of human nature. And no matter our effort, we cannot entirely accept, escape it. A very common sin that we always encounter is being judgmental. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. Puts it this way when being tempted to judge others. He said, judge not that you will not be judged. 
with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is on your brother's eye, but you do not notice the log that is in your eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? Thankfully, we are also all united in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Some of us may hold different beliefs in how exactly Christ's atoning on, atoning on the cross affects us today. Still, the fact that we've been saved should be enough for us to rejoice together. Here in our church, we are a diverse community, diverse community of believers. There are cultural differences, language barriers. Sometimes we are lost in translation. There will be disagreement on different op opinions, but does that not mean that we cannot work together in harmony for the glory of God and his kingdom? We are serving only one king, one Lord and one God. Sometimes, with our conversation with brethren, we may sound a little bit off, or sometimes confused, or we just can't understand the conversation because we have barriers. And I think Brother Derek and all the other brothers will agree with that. But because of the love we share with each other, we can always get things done in harmony, acknowledging things that went sideways and fixing it mutually, thereby resulting in a favorable outcome. For the mature brethren, thank you for showing brotherly love. You are our model. Though I myself I'm a work in progress in this matter. And I admit that sometimes it can be a piece of work. As Paul puts it in Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6, I put this as our preamble. As a prisoner of, for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the hope that belongs to your call. Our call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all in all. Freedom to live according to the purpose of our Creator is the gospel or the good news that Jesus brought to us, in which the gospel of Christ is so effective that it changes life for the better. If there is no change at all in our lives for the better, then what's the purpose of the gospel of Christ? What's the purpose of him dying on the cross? It's no use to you. Before we live in darkness and upon accepting Jesus Christ in our heart as our Lord and our Savior, we stepped him in the light. Being in darkness is as good as blind. But with the light, through Christ, it illumines darkness. The light in us will enable us to determine right from wrong. The light in us will illuminate our way to the path that the Lord wants us to travel. Talking about traveling. Traveling is not always at daytime. You can travel at night. Oh, I remember I traveled in Las Vegas, especially when you're on that 
cruising going to that point, that barstow, if you don't have light, where are you gonna be? But light illumines us. Jesus said, it's not gonna be an easy road. For Jesus himself told that there will be trials and struggles. But have no fear, he said, he is always with us. He said, for those who will follow me must deny themselves, pick up their cross daily and follow me and follow him. Do what he requires us to do. Being in his character, Jesus is our great model. He is our brother and he will abide with us wherever and whenever. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Not, not even that. But he also came to have life. To give us life and have it abundantly. He gave us joy to live. A pe a pe uh, he gave us joy to live and peace of mind. He gave us all his creations for us to enjoy and feel his blessings every day. This is not a prosperity gospel. But you know what? The children of God are well supplied. To understand that I know. We are well supplied. David wrote that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If you are a child of God, let me lock you. And lastly, being united in Christ. He is in us as we are in him. Our body is his temple. The tabernacle from the Old Testament where the only place you could worship the living God is now your body. We are a piece of the temple of God and being united when we come to worship and all together Put together our faith, our gifts, our efforts, our talents, our all in all. We are creating a great tabernacle of God. That's what the new Jerusalem is all about. We are the new Jerusalem. That's why we should encourage one another to attend each and every meeting for fellowship. Sharing, learning, studying, working. And serving together, guided by the Holy Spirit. As we celebrate Happy Fourth of July today, enjoy the delicious barbecue, enjoy the sights and sounds of the fireworks, enjoy the freedom. That this earthly dwelling can offer. But most importantly, with a grateful heart, enjoy the freedom that Christ offered to us. For every day is a celebration of joy and thanksgiving, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let freedom ring. Spread the saving grace of Jesus Christ and make disciples of all men and women. Again, our text this morning. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king, those who are in authority. You are a Christian and you're falling away. I invite you to come now and come back to God. Repent from your sins and 
all will be well because Christ already died for us. For those who are tired and weary, hang in there and hold on to your faith. God is good and that he all, always renew our strength day by day. For those who have heard the gospel and are still deciding as whether or not they will accept it, I invite you now, please accept Jesus' invitation. All of the things that we heard this morning about freedom and the unity that brings peace, joy, and fulfillment as an individual and as a church in following Christ, it will surely be given. Just like the song that Brother Ed sung this morning, we are standing on the promises of God. These are the promises of God that they cannot be broken. And if you decide to accept Jesus today, we have the water, the baptistry available for you. If there are any new prayer requests that should be mentioned, please come and let us know so that we could all pray together. Thank you so much for your kind of attention and the lesson is yours as we stand and sing the song of invitation.